is Martin Alvero. Good afternoon to all. My name is Al Martin Alvero. I'm from Seguro Canguru, like Kangaroo Insurance. I participated in this conference two years ago, and I thought it was highly motivating. But I was left with the feeling that sometimes tr digital transformation, digital proposals, were a little bit too advanced for the status in which we were. We've spent four years already working on insurance, uh, can kangaroo, kangaroo insurance, and working, analyzing the practices in the country in order to consolidate an insure tax system in Colombia. Now, what is kangaroo insurance? We will again in 2015. We are a digital leader to buy your own risk insurance for your car in Colombia. We have been growing around three times every year. And since we started the business, we have approximately 10,000 clients, and we have agreements with all the insurance companies that handle car insurance in the country. I am going to begin my presentation with a question. It's a question which I think that the question is asked, that the sector is asking once in a while. The startups are an opportunity or a threat for the sector? I think that the sector, that the dynamism of the digital sector and uh, digital activity of the sector is not what a sector of thousands and thousands of dollars should have. As the superintendent said, we counted how many Shirtek uh, startups there were in Colombia, and, and there were 11. Of the 11, two are insurers. Of the nine that are left, there's almost three of us that are in a stage of growth and not just testing business models. And that's the way it's been the past years. I feel that it is a result that is not satisfactory for the sector. And the advantage of cultivating a startup system is that it is an economic way of experimenting new things. It is also a catalyzer of change of business mo of traditional business models. And about the question whether it is a threat, I think that the threat that the sector is experiencing is not part of the sector. The thing is that the Colombian consumers have the ex have expectations and which grow more and more every day. They expect more and more from the entities that provide them with services. And if we, as a sector, manage to adapt to those expectations of consumers, there is not a big threat, but if we leave a hole between what the client is expecting and what we're truly offering, then there is the risk of the startup coming in and replacing the others, a Uber for the system. Uh, startups, uh, working with startups is a way of reducing that gap between what the consumer is expecting and what the insurance can do for the consumer, the insurance sector, of course. Taking that into account, I want to begin talking about the challenges with the first one, which is how do we increase the creation of startups. I want to continue with my story about the creation of the kangaroo insurance, because during these past years, almost there have been no startups, no new startups in the insurance uh, sector. We found out, we researched the business model, and I've been here in Colombia for approximately 10 years, uh, among other things, and the sale of insurance online has something that has existed about 10 years in Sweden, and the sale of insurance to um, individuals is done through internet. I've, in these 10 years that I've lived in Colombia, it's still not happening. Uh, it was less than 10 percent when we began in the car industry, but there was a lot of potential. The sector is big, 
The sector has a scheme of intermediation that is very interesting as an intermediary. And in January, we decided to, be, we, to begin. And so we started uh, interacting with the players of the sector, but they were on vacation, so we had to wait until February. And in February, we were finally able to meet with the first uh, institutions. It was very weird, actually, because they didn't know how to talk to us. And of the seven that we talked to, we talked to the managers or the CEOs. One said yes. On February 27, he said yes. We have to set up an insurance company, etc., etc., etc. We sent the papers, and we waited. Every week, we would call. And it was also always the same thing. Well, okay, well, let's wait. It was Monday or Friday. And every week they would tell us Monday or Friday. And we came to April and we were rejected. They said, no, we were comparing it with, an, with other companies. And we don't believe that Colombia is ready for that kind of a model. So we were rejected. But we Colombians like to sit down with our insurance advisor, to have a cup of coffee, and eventually we will have an insurance policy. In the rest, uh, it was what we had spoken. There was not, not a lot of interest. So we were very lucky and we decided to go to a satellite office. They're here today. I'm really very grateful, because otherwise it would have been impossible for us to begin to build a kangaroo office. So we decided that we would be a traditional company, and that is how we undertook our journey. And from there on, everything was uh, quicker. We launched in June, and we finally got in. Uh, in July, we got the uh, intermediary who opened more companies. But it took us six months. It took us six months to take off, to go live. And f that, for a startup, is just too much. You begin to wonder whether it's really worth it. And during the four years that I've been in the company, uh, it just seems very weird. It's just not worth it if it takes so long. The first challenge for me is to begin that challenge of that time. Now, what can insurers do? How can we attract the best startups and entrepreneurs to the sector? A very economic way to do it. Uh, who can give us tips of what we can do, things we can do if we go out to sell. And the first one was hiring a person a person who would be devoted to startups, relating to those models. Uh, well, whether there's no cash, then they do what we've always done. And the idea is to create a policy in the sense that uh, of, of, of saying which of the transactions done with internet with uh, with uh, with them actually interests you and then publish this document in the pages of the insurance companies where the, uh, where the entrepreneurs are going to be looking for information. The second barrier are the entry barriers. I want to tell, uh, tell you what that uh, trip really was like for the past uh, 10 years. We failed and we almost died three times. So we went out in, uh, June, in June, in July, we began sales, we began to grow, we were happy. In December, we thought, oh, this was easier than we thought. We worked with three insurance companies who were a small team and we had very promising clients. The first, month, the first of January of 2006 came by, and an insurer do, doubled the prices. So what they did, that they, they did away with the discount that they offered the clients, and so obviously our sales dropped to the floor. We absolutely lost them all. 
We analyzed a little bit and we decided, well, okay, let's keep them. But we continued improving. We continued to opening up agreements with other insurance companies. And it took us six or seven months approximately, but we are back where we wanted to go. Small, very small, but happy with the progress. And here, during these first months, I learned a lot because we come from the digital sector. They had not, uh, I thought that it was a digital company actually. But what about the, the closing? I learned that my competition uh, found more competitive uh, rates and they had best tools. And I can have the same in order to create a digital company. No, but you're too small, they would say to me. So I needed to be large before. But how, how am I going to be big if I don't have the tools to grow? But we had to. And we began to grow the, the following months. And I did it with that purpose. The months here, the more and more, um, the, the more we grew, the better rates, the better tools, the better tools, and, and, and the more efficient every day. And Insure had a very neat product, which worked very well. It had been taught for the digital world. In November of 2007, it was almost 47% of our sales. And in December, they abolished it. So they thought, oh no, after all that effort. And we had to again, well, should we try it or not? But so we decided that they would try it and we would try it again. We began to grow, to fix things. We entered into more agreements. We digitalized everything that we could. We, we brought every single tool that they would allow us to take with us. June came by and it dropped again. But that time, it was the world soccer game. I mean, there was nothing to do there. No competing. This experience, let's say it's rather strange as a digital entrepreneur to create a commercial company to be able to digitalize. So we, dis we had to grow in order to achieve the same rate as our competition. Sometimes you offer additional um, discounts to big companies to the same levels of commissions of our competition. To the general sector, the tools necessary to be able to digi digitalize the experience. So we had to go back and go again after four years to where we were, which was a company focused on digitalization. And those were four years that were absolutely lost. They were at, they were absolutely the same, but we were lost. And when we lost them because we could have done what we did four years later. How do we know that that is not? going to have four years later. One is that insurance companies should have a way of uh, offering, of, um, offering uh, the same channels, but if we standardize the same premiums for everybody, the ones that best results will give the client are the only ones that will continue save commissions to all the players. We define the commission, which is this one. And the same access to the tools. It was the vision, the need for the client of the channel, and not, uh, okay, and it should be like the size of the sales. And then came challenge number three, which was facilitating access to the databases, how we reduce the marketing cost to 40%. This is a page in Sweden. This is the way you quote and in a car insurance. It's translated with Google Translator, so I apologize. But that's the only thing people need, the ID, 
the number of the license plate number and the price, and that's it. Because they are managed, because they managed to bring the, the history of the car, any pledges, the personal history of the owner, uh, email, telephone, etc., from the database, existing databases in the market. Those are exactly the same data that we need. How many fields do we have for that? 15. What is the problem with that? I'm going to put you in context with an example. The day that we were able to get it, we got Sexper, which is, Sexper is the database where I, where you just give the license plate number, and that's enough. It brings all the information you need. And that saves you a lot of expenses, and you can charge 40% less. That's on the second week. Those are those kinds of automations. How do we improve this? What measures can we take? The issue of insurers, the insurers must define the policies of how FASECOLDA can access uh, SEXPER, how it's easier to get access to SEXPER. As a country sector, there must be an economic way of getting other databases as RUNT, for example, and if we're not able to do it, the digital transformation is going to be very slow. We're never going to be able to get into those fields in a long time. Challenge number four, the operational process. I am going to talk about the operational costs of uh, the kangaroo insurance, the kangaroo insurance. We have a, a couple of minutes in the life of a client that are actually very expensive. Data validation of the client, ensuring that you do get the rooms and the other platforms, uh, the platform, the oh, and, and, and also the inspection, which is uh, highly formatted from the beginning, and they request you a lot of information with a lot of manual uh, access. And it takes between 30 and 40 minutes, and many times it is a problem. Financing, which is a physical IOU in a digital deal, where 70% of our clients want to finance their policy. If you want it, you go into Kanguro, you want your policy, you get it in one hour. It can, in one day, it can be up to one day. 14 to 38 interactions on average by client, but they are absolutely necessary. One of those that we were talking about, the ideal process would be this one. You come in, it's not the form anymore. I would prefer to see the fields. You, you choose the action you want. You complete the SARLAF, which is the anti-money laundering and terrorist financing form. You take the lead. You complete the form. And then you, you continue to do all the uh, inputting all the information. You complete the form. You send it, and it's over. It would be a process from 1 to eight, 48 hours, and that's it. And that would enable the possibility of uh, selling better things. Because you put the car in a, by the, by, in a motorcycle, and you're definitely not liable for that. Uh, but you would make the sale of your insurance, of your motorcycle insurance, very easy. Now, and this, how do you do it? how to increase the pace of the digitalization of our processes. I know it's difficult because sometimes we're difficult, we're far away from the client, and we don't know where the client is and what he likes. If they create their own digital channel, they are going to begin to know their clients. The best processes have been done that way, and they have been able to um, implement it that way, getting to know their client. Two. Identify yourselves as a digital company, a 
an insurance company is a data company. They should uh, they, they identify themselves as a data company. We should ask how many of the people in the board know how to program a language, a computer language. Because, I mean, we bring the same talent. The best programmers come to our sector. How can we get them to come here? I think that the leaders of tomorrow in the insurance company are going to be born in this initiative. It's an initiative that will not make it develop just once, and the sector is being transformed. And finally, a proposal. I know that it's uh, very expensive. I know it's a big rust, uh, risk. But buying the core of the business, we live those with those cores once every day, and we live among millions of millions. It's very difficult, zero business. And we continue without creating our own core. That is the big challenge. I know that here few are going to do it, but in 20 years, those of you who did not do it, it's going to be very difficult to compete with the rest of the industry. And the last one is challenge number five, modernizing, modernizing Sir Laft. It's not an operational process because actually it has its own one, its own model. And our best um, model right now is the process. How does it work? The client accepts. I've tried to optimize it as much as I've, I've been able to. The client accepts, then completes the SAR left, either on the computer, t telephonically, or digitally, with the, with the fingerprint and the signature. It's very difficult. And then uh, they say, no, 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 no. You, the fingerprint has to be, has has to be able. You have to be able to print your fingerprint there. Only, and if you're among the 20 percent whose fingerprint doesn't come out very clear, then it's not going to work very well. And then, because the client generates and receives a PDF of the SAR left, signs and print and 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 prints his or her print, and the, and then those who we receive verify and digitalize the data, we then put it, we are then upload it, we upload the support. I see two solutions. One is the, the insurance companies come to an agreement with the solution, and two, is that the superintendency said it is modernizing itself. I want to tell you how we do it in Sweden. I went, I go to my internet bank and internet, and it, a pop-up comes up, oh, you need more data. Oh, okay, I put the data. And so in the other bank that I had, it would do exactly the same as it takes also. I came in again, and they say, you cannot proceed if you don't complete the missing data. Okay, well, I didn't do it with anybody. It just did not work either in Sweden. So the main challenge is for, to consolidate the short day insured system in Colombia. One, increasing the creation of startups, is de decreasing the entry barriers, facilitating an access to databases, digitalize the operational process, and modernizing SARLAFT. <laughs> In 2015, in Seguros Canguro, we celebrated the sale of 50 policies in one month. In 2017, we did it in one day. In 2020, we'll do it in one hour. The digital transformation is not linear, it's exponential. The moment to act is now. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Well, first of all, I want to express my gratitude to Fase Kolda for this invitation to participate in this discussion with Martin. Probably at this point in time, I am the baby boomer generation sitting here talking to a millennial. And it's very interesting what I have experienced uh, during the last uh, three years. 
of uh, participating in these processes of big data and digital transformation. I am still an insurer in many areas, but this has given me the opportunity to learn about the path that has been traced for the new world that is already here. So you are Swedish, you are young, you come to Colombia and you start a startup. And what's my comment, the disruption is that he used to be a consultant in the area of experts of mineral products. So my first question is, Martin, how come you are now working for the insurance world, particularly in Colombia? <laughs> I always worked on natural resources in Sweden and now in Colombia, but then I started feeling that uh, the more coal I sold, the worse the environmental damage. So I don't want that to be my legacy. So I needed to go to the digital world. In the digital world, I identified a wonderful opportunity in the insurance sector, and I compared how it was in Sweden and how it could be here in Colombia. So I had to start working in that area. But clearly, you don't come from a family of insurance or any insurance companies whatsoever. So the first message we must consider is that the disruption and the opportunities in this new digital world arise unexpectedly. And I believe that marketing is an example that you can do it without having any experience in the sector where you are innovating. It's just having the interest and the ability to develop a company. He was about to die three times. So part of the process of these initiatives has a lot to do with that uh, uh, resilience, the ability to overcome difficulties. You told some of your challenges, but maybe you want to elaborate, Martin, on those challenges and which would be your recommendations or your advice to a group of people trying to start an innovation process with a startup in the insurance business. Well, my success has been because very early on, I thought that it was easy to work in this sector. And, and I have received a lot of help, a lot of assistance. I am extremely grateful, particularly uh, by the uh, financing companies. We became large, and we felt that more doors were opening to us. What was difficult was to convince the consumer, the Colombian consumer, that this was the right way to do their purchase. That was really the difficult part. And what's really important is to establish very good relationships in the sector. Your main client are the insurers. Very well. One of the topics you mentioned at the end is that you invite insurers to create their own digital channels so that it becomes a joint learning process. However, when you look at the experience of insurance canguro, what we have is the option to give options to the consumer. I don't know whether you mentioned it in your presentation, but one of the things I saw in your uh, workplace is that it's not just a price competitor but you also rate the service of insurers, and somehow you use technology and the ability of consumers to express their views. So I don't know whether you would like to give us an opinion about this mix of price and quality of service. How has been the process with insurance? Because they are in the ranking, because they see that they are immediately being rated, and that is very visible. And I believe that's a very important point. Yes, to focus on selling only what it is, what's cheaper, that's the focus. The, the consumer doesn't search to be well protected. So we decided to emphasize many other factors. Each client that has a loss with us, we interview him, we ask him how he did, and the client scores uh, our service. <clears throat> we also measure the quality index of the sector. The superintendent, the financial superintendency in Sweden does it every year. In Colombia, however, there is nothing like that. And some insurers are very much focused on price. That's the problem. I don't think that's the right path. One interesting thing that one of the speakers mentioned this morning 
is that doing the whole process absolutely digital without a nudge to the consumer was not the, the best thing to do. So in that regard, what we see in the process of Kanguru Insurance right now is that there is a touch of advisory services for the consumer who uh, you know, comes through the landing play page and through your strategy, but most probably Kanguru Insurance gives a nudge to the consumer to make a decision. Yes, of course. That's something we were discussing before. Would it be wise to have an end-to-end -end so that there is no contact throughout the process? How do you see that evolution? Well, the fact that you can do it will mean that both for the advisor there will be more less time in paperwork as for the client that wants to do it alone. Maybe in the beginning almost nobody wants to do it, but as well, this type of insurance in themselves are massive. <laughs> And they should be dealt with massively. So many people will require advice. Advice should not be lost. And but as time goes by, more and more cases will just go straight on. And that's the objective of Kanguro Insurance, to have just one digital step until the consumer receives the policy. Well, a lot, a lot has been said about insert tech and fintech. What we have perceived in the last few years is that in the case of fintech, many times banks react afraid with a fear for that fintech to displace them. But it ends up to being a collaborative process. From, the, from your experience, your business model will never replace the role of the insurer, but will complement it. However, my question is, will there be a possible disruption where the insurant, insurance in the end feels that the insured tech will replace them? Well, if the sector does not adapt to the consumer expectations. There will be a big gap and a huge opportunity to create a digital insurer that has the processes on the systems, the modern systems, to be able to respond to the customer needs. So it depends on that. <clears throat> Are we going to open up for that or not? So. Uber may come one day and take our place, at least in certain areas. But what can I say? I think that it, theoretically startups complement uh, the other systems. Well, thinking about insurers and their involvement in processes such as yours, what limitations have you identified? Do you find that insurers are open? Is it difficult to uh, approach them? Are there resources assigned for the development of insured tech in the sector? Well, right now there is a lot of willingness from insurers to test new things and to innovate. So it's no secret that it is a need. <laughs> I haven't seen that there are resources that the insurance have available in order to support startups yet. But there is a lot of intention, but there is a technological or cultural legacy that uh, halts the process. Well, we said that there are some insurance that don't have available APIs so that a technological startup can complement their systems. And the other limitation is access to data, sectorial data. <clears throat> so somehow I think that we have to rethink how, from the point of view of the sector itself, we can facilitate access to the data we manage so that there is a more uh, of there is a better flow of the digital process. I believe that this is one of our requests of these initiatives. Well, not only for us, but for the sector as a whole. Operating costs in uh, Sweden, for instance, 
the uh, costs are 80 percent in uh, losses and the technical uh, the profitability is about five percent in Colombia we have losses of about 60 odd percent with negative technical results because the operating costs are so high in the business process <clears throat> and I think that the fact that you live they eat day in and day out of how apps and systems work together makes innovation to move forward very slowly and sometimes take the wrong path, thinking about the final consumer. <clears throat> well, and now a reflection about the sour left uh, topic. This is one of the elements that make the process very complex and difficult, particularly for the consumer. It has been difficult to unify or to streamline this and the sector. From the technological point of view, there is an initiative sponsored by some insurers, and it is available to anyone. However, it has been very difficult to welcome that initiative where you could have a repository of Sarlaf, for instance, where you can uh, automatically log in and the difficulty of the client can be solved. I mean, like for instance, being able to send a PDF with your fingerprint with that information. So there is the information, but apparently there is a lack of will. How important is SARLA for that process of Kanguro insurance to make it more efficient? It's very representative, of course. Any delays which are caused, uh, loss of clients, and uh, costs uh, related to managing. But I think that we are beginning to understand it, but it has been difficult to reach a consensus among the various stakeholders. Some insurance uh, have excellent initiatives of their own, but I think that as a sector, it shouldn't be a competitive an, uh, advantage to be able to manage our left appropriately because you may have a larger portion of the cake, but the cake is very small. It should be better to grow the cake. Mm. Uh, for, I mean, the penetration of insurance in Colombia is three times higher. Well, you said that there will be a drop of 70, of 35 percent when the SARLAV process uh, gets involved in the sales of seguros canguros, canguro sales uh, insurance. So it's a very significant impact for these type of initiatives to be more effective and to have greater uh, insurance penetration. Yes, what's interesting about Kanguro insurance is that we can estimate costs, but the costs we experience is also experienced by many other channels, but it's not that visible as it is the case with Kanguro insurance. So it's not just do something for the sake of digital business, but for the sector as a whole, it's a very high occult cost or hidden cost. Well, what other uh, obstacles, uh, regulatory obstacles, have you identified? Have you identified anything that you would like to comment? Because as you heard, the superintendency is very open to sponsor progress in this area. Well, to be truthful, no. Colombia is a country where we can really uh, discuss things. And as the superintendent was saying, there is they are very willing to find solutions to any obstacles identified. So I think that we have some key messages here. <clears throat> and uh, to finish, I would just like to uh, discuss a chart I learned at a course in MIT, which are the sectors that are more exposed to technological disruptions. And well, the first are the media, then services, education will also be one of the, the strong technological disruption sectors. And in the end, we have finances and insurance. And one of the gatekeepers is regulations, but that will evolve little by little. And the other one is to fail because of costs. So experimenting with insert tax is probably less expensive for insurers than experimenting themselves. So I believe that this is a very important 
experimenting uh, opportunity. This is another message that we have to convey. There will be disruption. And I was saying a while ago to Martin that there are many zombies walking around and they don't know that they are dead. And this is part of the process of technological disruption. I think we have the right time. And congratulations, Martin, for this uh, entrepreneurship mentality. And disruption comes from any part around the world. And the example is Martin. Thank you very much. <clears throat>